Hallelujah. Grace for the supplanter. Ay, ay, ay. I just need grace. I need grace. I need the Holy Spirit to help me minister this word how I received it. Hallelujah. There's grace for the supplanter. Tell somebody, grow your grace. Grow your grace. Tell someone, grow your grace. Grow your grace. Grow your grace. Grow your grace. Hallelujah. So what then is grace? What is grace? Can I tell you that grace is the most difficult thing to understand, define, and explain? The grace of God is as challenging to understand. Mercy, we know mercy, yeah? You know mercy. You know holy. Grace is a whole different ballgame. But by the same grace of God, by the spirit that enables grace, hallelujah, the spirit of the living God that searches the mind of God, we would understand this morning. Thank you, Lord. So grace can be defined just by in the world. Grace can be defined as a cautious God, goodwill, an inexplicable goodwill for renewal, transformation, growth, re- sanctification, and all of that. But biblically, we understand that grace is the unmerited divine favor for salvation of the sinners. We've heard that before, right? You say, oh, grace, oh, unmerited favor, divine favor. You know, that's true for the sinner. But for the saints, grace is an unmerited, yet merited favor. That sounds contradictory. No, it doesn't. Because grace is a measure. Grace is measure upon measure. Say, grow your grace. Grow your grace. All right? So for the believer, grace is an unmerited, yet merited favor for divine influence operating in the saints For what? For regeneration, transformation, sanctification, separation. So when you're born again, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you're born again, your life carries certain graces. Because you received a grace. As we read from scripture. When you declared Christ as your Lord. And as you partner with Christ. You receive grace. Upon grace. And every time you overcome. Yeah, Jehovah. You receive a measure of the grace. And even when you don't overcome. The grace operates in your life. Why? Paul himself. The one who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. God said what? My grace is sufficient for you. Why? Because of a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what the thorn was. Could have been a sickness. Could have been a character. We don't know. But we just know it was a thorn. But God would not. Did he put the thorn there? No. I believe the thorn came for whatever reason. But God left the thorn there. Because that thorn was working for Paul's good, not for God's good. That thorn was working for Paul's good. If it wasn't working for Paul's good, God would not leave it there. He is a good God. There is no evil found in him. So when God leaves a certain circumstance in your life, all things work together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is working for your good. I know that sounds counterintuitive. That sounds like, ha, really God? But believe you me, saints, there are some circumstances, if we do not have it, it might fall into perdition. I know that is hard. It's just, think about it. Think about your children. Sometimes you're just able, you are able You are endowed with the finances, the opportunity, everything to give them that which you know. If you give them, we'll probably lead them astray, right? What do you do? You withhold it. Because for their good, they don't need it. Are you able to buy a cell phone for your five-year-old? Of course, many of you can. Many of you can buy the most smartest phone for your five-year-old. Why don't you buy it? They don't need it. Right? Hallelujah. Say, grow your grace. Grow your grace. Hallelujah. Grace is sufficient. And so how do we obtain grace? 
How do we obtain grace? We already read from 2 Corinthians that we obtain grace when we receive Christ. When we receive the Holy Ghost. When you receive that first, you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive a measure of grace. That grace is enough for you to excel as a child of God. Hallelujah. That grace you obtained at salvation is a measure of grace good enough for you to overcome in this life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we obtained a measure of grace and salvation. We have grace over us while we are sinners. While we are sinners, you have grace. You know why you have grace? When you come with it, when you encounter a sinner, that grace, the Holy Spirit is always hovering. What was the Holy Spirit doing when the earth was not created? Hovering over the earth. Hovering in the face of the deep, over darkness. That is the same thing God continues to do. How did you come to know the Lord? The Holy Spirit was hovering over you. Hovering. Looking for every opportunity to say, Pastor David, today is the day. Knocking on your heart to say, come to the saving knowledge of Christ. The Holy Spirit was hovering over you. Grace was hovering over you. Hallelujah. So we receive a measure, another measure of grace at salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to Romans 3, verse 23. Let's read Romans 3, verse 23. How do we obtain grace? We receive grace, Romans 3. Say, for everyone has sinned. We have fallen short of God's glorious standard. Go to verse 24. Yet God, who undeserved, yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to Ephesians 4 verse 7. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 4 verse 7. We've read that scripture before. It says, however, he has given each of us a special gift through generosity of Christ. Somebody says a special grace. So we all have a special grace. I don't care how broken, beaten up you feel this morning. I don't care how dejected, downtrodden you feel this morning. You carry a grace you can disperse. Hallelujah. You carry a grace you can disperse. You can transfer and you can give. Hallelujah. How do we operate and walk in grace? Acts 6 verse 8. Acts 6 verse 8. Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. I know what you're thinking. Oh, it was Stephen. He was filled with amazing grace and power. You are filled with amazing grace and power. As a man thinketh, so is he. Hallelujah. You are filled with the same grace and power Stephen was filled with. The same grace and power. But you allow that grace and power to manifest through you. That God may perform. Because it's God who performs, not us. That God may perform amazing signs, miracles, wonders, and that the supernatural may manifest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Majesty, your grace, your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hand. We sing it, Majesty, Majesty. Present. In the presence of 